subscribe to Gizmo Times and get notified about our latest videos by hitting the bell icon. Hey guys, welcome to Gizmo Times. Uh, you are watching uh, the tips and tricks of the OnePlus 60 smartphone that was launched with the Android Pie based Oxygen OS uh, and uh, there are quite a few differences from the previous one. If you go into the settings, you check out the about section. That is also quite a bit changed. Uh, you can see that uh, this comes with that larger display that 6.41 inch display and the Snapdragon 845 is the same. It's the Oxygen OS 9.0.4 based on Android 9 Pie. That's the latest OS uh, from Android and that is uh, the latest uh, best from OnePlus as well on their Oxygen OS. So this is uh, the device and in the tips and tricks we are going to do two parts. Uh, the first one uh, would be about a few uh, things about customization and uh, then about the special features in the second part. Since this is going to be a lengthy one, uh, I thought we'd cut it down into two parts. So to begin with uh, the home screen settings itself, uh, this is the home screen uh, and uh, this is just like basic Android, you get uh, the app drawer. And you're seeing squarish icons, which are not a part of the basic uh, uh, Oxygen OS. Uh, for that, we had to long press on the home screen. And then you see these options, that's uh, widgets, wallpapers, and home settings. In the home settings, uh, that icon pack is given here, that's square. I can change that to round or OnePlus. OnePlus is uh, their own icons that uh, they use. These are the round ones that would give a round border with the regular icons becoming smaller. And then the square ones that we're using right now. And if you go to more, you actually can download a lot more and uh, that can be customized here through the same icon packs. So that is a good thing that the Oxygen OS has its own way of customizing the icons as well. And you see those options here that these three are given here. Next is about uh, the swiping down to access the quick settings. If you swipe down from uh, the uh, home screen, this is uh, basically because of this large display. Whenever there's a large display, it's always hard to reach out to the top uh, even when you're using the same hand. So uh, instead of using the second hand always like this, you can actually drag this down and then drag this down second time to go to all the quick settings. So that is a very good and a very easy way to do that. And the setting for that is in the same home screen settings that you see here. Next is the shelf. Shelf is something that you see here uh, that would give you all the recent applications that you have used. Also the toolbox uh, uh, to quickly do any function such as take a selfie, use the calculator, set a timer, send files, new tab and the recent contacts. Uh, this is uh, something that you have to enable and a dashboard to let you know what the data used or the storage used and the battery that is being used here. You can add cards here for the membership. So this is all in the uh, thing called a shelf, but you can turn it off. Uh, uh, this is something similar to the how Google uh, uh, setup is on the basic Android phones, which I basically don't use most of the time. And uh, I would rather be annoyed with that. And I can turn that off. If I turn that off in this uh, section, if I now swipe uh, left to right, there's nothing here. So that is one way you can actually uh, turn it off uh, the shelf in case you don't want to use the shelf. Uh, uh, for most of the users, it's actually helpful. So you can do that. The next one is about double tap to lock. This is one good feature that most of the uh, users would basically use rather than always pressing the power button. You can actually tap this twice and that would lock the uh, phone for you. So double tap on the uh, home screen. This is only on the empty area. You can't tap on the app areas or any widgets. It's on the empty area that you have to tap on and that would actually lock the screen for you. So that was another feature here. So these are the different things that you see under the home screen settings. There are quite a lot of things that you can use to actually customize the entire thing here. One more thing about the apps here is that you can hide the apps by uh, a very good uh, feature here. Most of the users would actually miss this out. If you go into the app drawer and you swipe from the left, this is the hidden space that you see here. So there are no hidden apps here. I can come here and I can hide, hide any app that I want. And now if I go back, Instagram is uh, hidden. Long press the icon to unhide the application. So if I go back to this uh, page, you won't see Instagram here. It seems like it's not installed at all, uh, but it's actually hidden. Uh, to again access it, you need to go here and you see that here. If you long press on this, you can get those, you get those options like unhide, uninstall, edit and app info. I can unhide and it will go back to the regular app drawer. So this is a very good feature. Most of the users who don't know what it, it's just very easy. You have to just uh, swipe it from the left uh, corner, anywhere on the left, you have to drag it towards the right and you see this hidden space. Uh, so this is one good feature again under the customization options. Uh, so these are the different things for the home screen, for the app drawer on how to actually uh, customize it and make it uh, look better for you. Under the home screen, what, there's one more thing about uh, the number of uh, icons you want to see here, how many columns do you want to see the icons in, it could be 3, 4 or 5. So these are the number of columns that you can set. 
based on the icon uh, number of icons and you can uh, change the size of the icons here I would actually set it to this one usually the larger one so it's easier to understand which app is that so this was all about the customization uh, the next part about uh, this is uh, under the display settings so display is something that is very good on the oneplus 60 that is a super AMOLED display and it comes up with the brilliant colors but that is again customizable you can actually change whatever you want if you go into the settings and under the display settings so you see these things under the display settings uh, that's adaptive brightness which is basically the uh, most basic uh, feature and uh, here it is you can uh, set this up if you want uh, it to be automatically set up i would usually set up uh, manually because most of the times when i'm on the outdoors i would have the highest brightness and when i'm indoors i would change it so it's a one-time change and i don't need the sensor to always keep checking how much is the brightness available around next one is about the night mode this is uh, that basic uh, ambient light conditions you see the night mode will automatically cal calibrate the screen color temperature to match the environment and this will reduce the fatigue and strain on the eyes so this is that blue light filter which we almost have in most of the android phones now the blue light filter actually helps uh, reducing all the stress on your eyes and brain so you can turn this on and you can see that the color temperature now changes it's a, a bit warmer uh, all the blue light is now gone and you can change it if you want you can make it even further aggressive with that night mode and based on your preference it's not that you always have to have it strong you can set it to mid uh, of both weak and strong and uh, turn it on and if you want to do that automatically uh, from sunrise to sunset this is a good thing that uh, it's sunrise to sunset and uh, it would usually uh, be 10 pm to 7 am that is when the night mode would automatically turn on so this is about the night mode the next one is reading mode uh, this is something again users always are confused about uh, here reading mode is uh, that depending on ambient light conditions reading mode will automatically adjust the screen color temperature and the calibration optimized for text reading to match the environment so here it's not about only the warmth or the coolness of the display here you get to see uh, that the color changes based on the text that you are reading based on the background of that text that is present there so you can add the apps first which app are you going to read the text on you can add it on the chrome app and that um, that would be uh, set it up here and then you have to turn on the reading mode the reading mode would work only on the chrome application here as well if you see that the colors are now gone if i now turn this off the colors are coming back under reading mode what happens is it mostly becomes black and white or the monochrome one where reading is important where the text is important so you can uh, set that up if you're turning uh, on the reading mode from here you'll see that it's uh, turned on everywhere and if you don't want to turn this on here and you want automatically to have it turned on in uh, some certain apps you can add the apps here so this is the reading mode it's a bit different from the night mode so you need to understand what reading mode is it's mostly for the reading so all the colors are gone it's mostly becoming a, a monochrome kind of thing next is about the notch display this uh, little notch on the top uh, this time looks better than what it was on the oneplus 6 uh, and it gives access to only the camera there's nothing else on the top because the earpiece is present on this uh, tiny slit on the top but the notch still annoys a few users i'm not sure why i am uh, i don't uh, really bother uh, about that it's okay to have that amount of notch there but in case you don't want it there's a setting that is given by oneplus here where you can show the notch area or hide the notch area so if you tap on this the entire area becomes black the icons become white so you can see the differences here the, all the icons or whatever the status bar things are they are black when the notch is shown but if the notch area becomes black the entire thing becomes white there the uh, icons the text that is given there it all becomes white so even this way the phone actually looks good but it seems like uh, it's again showing a lot of bezels on the top i would rather have it with that little notch so it looks better this way for me the next one is about the ambient display ambient display is where uh, it would show uh, the information on the screen whenever you pick up the phone so if it's if the phone is laying flat on the surface it's it's totally off now if you pick up you see that uh, this these things are being shown even the fingerprint area is shown here and that is the ambient display you can also tap on the screen to show if it's actually turned off you can tap and that would show all the information so that is the ambient uh, display and uh, right now it did show all this even though the option was turned off that is because the fingerprint setting is uh, present in such a way that if you want if you tap on the display the fingerprint area would show up and that is the ambient display that is showing up so whatever you want to show can be uh, seen here that's uh, the clock style uh, if you want it to be classic analog or digital so whatever uh, uh, you want to make the phone look like on the lock screen itself that's the blank screen you can change that from here and if you have a new notification you can set that up to wake up the screen when you receive notifications i would not prefer this because most of the time when there, there are people around you you don't want everyone to see that notification it's only for you so you'd rather watch it later 
so a uh, new notification in case you still don't mind if you want the notifications to light up the screen you can activate that from here so this is all about the display settings again you see uh, the options for font size uh, the uh, font actually you can change the font here uh, oneplus slate and roboto there are two fonts here the basic one is roboto that is uh, the basic one that uh, by default comes here the accent can be changed here uh, for the uh, customization again the theme can be changed you can have uh, light colorful and dark uh, the good thing about this is that the theme if you set it up to dark it would actually look brilliant uh, the phone's entire look changes and many users do prefer this it actually looks good here if you see that the entire uh, app drawer area the settings they all become black i rather would prefer a basic uh, white one or the light one but many users are a fan of the dark displays or uh, the fan of the dark themes so, so that can be also changed from the display settings so this was all about the display settings and also the home screen's customization the final one under the first part is about the gestures here so again if you go to the settings uh, there are gestures that you can turn on uh, that is the button and gestures options uh, where you can go and uh, uh, turn on the buttons and gesture features where you have these different options the first one is the navigation bar and gestures where if you go on this you can see that you can either have the navigation bar uh, that is present towards the bottom that is used by default and i always prefer to have these because it's easy to reach out and easy to use but even in case you want the navigation gestures you can use them as well here swipe up from the bottom center edge of the screen uh, bottom edge in the center of the screen would give you to home screen and swipe up from the bottom center on the edge of the screen and pause uh, to give, get to the recent apps and back swipe up from the left or right of the bottom of the screen so if i go through this this goes to the home and if i go here and hold it it would give the recent applications here so this is how it uh, comes up and if i go this it is home and if i am going into any application if i swipe from the right or left corner it would go back so these are the different uh, guesses that you can use here so this is how it shows up these are the different uh, recent applications that you see here and these are the different gestures here but i would rather use the basic ones uh, that's the uh, basic navigation buttons so it's uh, back home and recent so that is what i would prefer and uh, since i have been using uh, the samsung galaxy s9 plus there uh, the back button is on the right and the recent one is on the left that i can change if i go back to uh, go to the navigation bar customization i can swap the buttons now the buttons uh, towards the bottom become uh, the left one the recent key and the right one would be the back key if i switch that it those buttons on the bottom are getting changed so this is one thing and you can add a, a hide or add the navigation bar so there's one option that shows up here if you turn that option on so if i press on this it would actually hide swipe up from the bottom to show the navigation bar it, if you want to stop hiding navigation please tap on that dot so this is how you can actually use it just tap it and that would hide and if you swipe it up it would show the navigation now if i want to keep it there i tap on that button again so these are the different things under the navigation bar customization i can actually again uh, change what the home button can do on long press change what the recents and back, uh, back button can do on long press so these are the different things under the gestures and navigations and there's a few other quick gestures as well that slip to mute three finger screenshot and answer call by gestures so the three finger is a very good one and it's easy and you can just uh, take a screenshot by swiping three fingers here it's not about up or down it's just dragging three fingers anywhere and that would that would take a screenshot double tap to wake under this display you had the option of double tap to actually turn off the display and here you have the double tap to wake so that would uh, activate the display here so these are the different gestures uh, gestures under uh, the button and gesture features and those were the different home screen display and the gesture options so this was the part one of the one plus 60 tips and tricks and uh, do continue watching the second part to know more about uh, the interesting features that are seen on the OnePlus 60 and the Oxygen OS.